As a psychologist, I've had to deal with many children that have anxiety and fear at levels that is completely taking over their life. Parents don't know what to do. They may be going to school and they are struggling in school to such a degree that they need someone to rescue them from it. They would go into their bedroom at night and they will not be able to sleep. They would get out of their bed because they have great fear and come into their parents' rooms. And they will plead with the parents to be able to stay in their room because they cannot be alone. They may be having nightmares or night terrors where they wake up screaming because of the things that they're seeing or the things that they're dreaming about. They may be uh, uh, needing help in the area of being accepted and wondering if they're going to get hurt in some particular way, uh, maybe uh, afraid that the house is going to burn down, afraid that someone very close to them is going to die, and that includes their own parents, afraid of the potential that, uh, th that their parents may divorce. Whatever it is, although all children to some degree have fears, we're talking about the type of fear that completely overtakes the child at every level of his life and that no matter how much you try to reason into his or her head that everything is going to be all right they have nothing to fear it does not uh, provide any application to the place of their heart where the fear is you see fear is a spirit it may manifest as anxiety and worry and terror but the fact is it's a spirit that has come against the soul of your child and the spirit of fear creates a bondage, which means the fear begins to overtake the person that it has a hold of. And once that spirit of bondage takes hold, that it's bigger than that child's own human spirit. Yes, we know that greater that he, is he that is in me, when Jesus Christ is in us, than he that is in the world, that would be the fallen spirits, the demonic spirits, Satan, and also a spirit of fear. The problem is that the spirit of Christ has not been brought to the scene of where the spirit of fear has taken over in the soul. Yes, it's possible to be blood-bought, born again, the innocent child knowing Jesus, having a regenerated spirit where the wicked one toucheth you not, but have a soul that is in the bondage of fear. That's why Paul said to the believing church in Romans 8, 15, we no longer have the spirit of bondage again to fear. We have the spirit of adoption, capital S, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So the disconnect is the fact that the spirit of fear has a right to be there and the child will have no idea how or why it is there. They won't even understand it as a spirit. They will just know that they're afraid all the time and that they sometimes will see things that terrify them. They will sometimes believe things that will terrify them. So praying on behalf of them is very, very important, and also urging and encouraging them to speak, speak openly before they go to bed, before they go to school, in a prayer where they actively, in warfare against that spirit, uh, speak against it in the name of Jesus. Now, you might say, well, my child's really young. I don't think that they'll get that. That young child can get the perception that they are fallen and that they have not done things good in their life, and they can perceive that they are a sinner and they need a Savior. If they have already done that, you can be sure that the innocence of their mind, even though it's not really formed in terms of understanding the things that I'm sharing right now, they will believe. They will not only believe, they will trust, but they will look to you for that strength. So it's very, very important that you activate within them this power of the, the prayer against the enemy. It's more active in this case than it is passive, meaning that it's an open rebuke. It can even be done with eyes open at times when you're praying with them. That any fear that is in this place, any fear that is... Uh, coming around my child and trying to attack my child in his or her soul. I rebuke that spirit of fear in the name of Jesus and you will depart. The child can also be trained to do that. Think about how God has prepared them with understanding the warfare against that spirit and how he will be able to use them at a very young age in their life. You probably noticed that 
That's already happening because the greatest attack on the youngest of children is oftentimes evidence that God has prepared them for things that are truly amazing, that you've never even entered your mind in terms of potential powerful ministry. Problem is the enemy also knows that that child is a high value target to him. And he will zoom in. He will activate whatever he can to discourage them, to get them to believe he's all alone, the, the child is all alone, and uh, that they, there is no hope. And that is why the parents become the intercessors and that they openly rebuke that spirit of fear around them and teaching the child to do the same thing. Also, I want you to understand that there's usually a place, a, an opening that was given. And there might be a situation where someone very close to the child died recently. Look for that. There might be a terrifying event that the child went through recently and you are not aware of it. There might be a situation where there had been wrong kind of touch when they were alone at some friend's house or some other relative's home. You have to leave everything open to let God show you, not to go out and just automatically assume it's this or this or that. But let God reveal it. Search me, O oh God. Search the child's heart. Bring forth. Help us to know. Reveal to us. So that's part of the prayer, to look for the place that the fear has come in. It's very clear in the scriptures, especially in Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Verse 27 says that we can give a place to the enemy. We often give a place when we're not trusting God in our pain. We're, not giving a, we're, we're giving a place to the enemy when we don't confess our sin before him. We're giving a place to the devil when we have a root of bitterness that's begun to sprung, spring up. Or we have uh, anger that has uh, gone into rage. And that gives a place, an invitation to the enemy to torment our soul. So there is that child innocently known of God, belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ, but being batted around by the enemy through this spirit of fear. It's important to give him or her hope. Speak words of hope. Speak life into them. The, the power of life and death is in the tongue. The power of blessing and cursing is in the tongue. Bless them and, and tell them that you speak life of Jesus Christ into them and over them. So, it, and this is not a one-time thing. This is a constant, repetitive thing day by day, day and night, until that enemy has been put on notice and that child has developed a strength and God gives you the revelation of where that child is to surrender before God. Because when God is given liberty to show us, any one of us, what may be in there hindering us from being having the fullness in Him, then we are to surrender it. Maybe we need to confess it. Maybe we need to uh, uh, repent from something. But the Holy Spirit will show very carefully what needs to be done in that situation. But ultimately, for a child, the fear often comes because they've been hurt or they've been terrified by something that oftentimes the parents may not be aware of. There's one more dimension. That is if the parent, either or both of the parents, have struggled with fear or anxiety, which is fear, in the through a season of their life, that will be an iniquity that comes upon the child. In other words, that is a predisposition in the spiritual realm for that child to uh, experience that same type of fear. So when a triggering event comes in their life, maybe at school or with their friends or even in their home because of distress that may be occurring between mom and dad, then they two will go into that place of fear where they will begin to struggle and come under its cloak and come under its oppression where it comes to the point where they don't have the fear but the fear has them and when the fear has that person the fear owns them but in the name of Jesus that spirit must break free and the revelation will come. So pray with me now on the basis of what you just learned here. And it's very important that you don't pray. Ex you don't have to pray exactly what I'm praying. It's important that you pray thematically be to God in heaven in the name of Jesus. The, the, the things that you need to know. The things that you're asking God to do in the name of Jesus for your child to be free. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray right now that you would descend upon our child and you would envelop him or her in a cloak of peace, a peace that will keep them in perfect peace as they're stayed upon Jesus. 
And Lord, we pray also that your perfect love would not only descend and come upon them, but it would penetrate at every part of their being, mind, soul, heart, spirit. Perfect love casts out fear. We pray, O oh God, that they would sense your presence even in the midst of this fear such as they have never known. And by sensing your presence, they begin to look in and look up. Fear causes us to look out, but now they're going to look in to see what's happening within them and what it is that's troubling them, and then they're going to look up to you to surrender that place to you. Father, we as parents are asking in our intercession that you would also reveal to us we do not want to interfere, but we do want to intervene at the place our child needs us most. We know this is an opportunity for you to prepare them for amazing ministry in the years ahead. But at the same time, we want to be their protector. And we need your urgency in us to show us where to protect. Now, Lord, we're asking to see the source of why that fear is there in our child. We're asking to see what may have landed within their soul in a way that is giving access to torment them when they sleep at night or when they uh, uh, or don't want to go to school or when they begin to have a meltdown. We pray, O oh God, that you would show us that place, reveal it, and then reveal to us how we are to surrender it to you, whether it be in the form of trusting you in the pain of what has happened, whether it be in the form of bitterness that has come because of of, of how the, the, uh, the child, our child has been hurt or whether it's the need for repentance and to come before you, God, and ask for your forgiveness. We trust you for the great and glorious things that you're about to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.